Hello everyone and welcome to the MathDBase.com Anacast series. I'm your host, John Kasidu. In this installment in the Developmental Mathematics series, I'm going to discuss Prime and Composite Numbers, Part 4, Determining and Finding Larger Prime Numbers. Unless a whole number is very small, say under 144, it is generally not immediately obvious just by looking at it and without the divisibility rules what that number might be divisible by. If we want to determine if 149 is a prime or composite number, we can apply the divisibility rules that were discussed in part 1, multiples and divisibility. 149 is not divisible by 2, 3, or 5 because it is not even, the sum of the digits is 14 which is not divisible by 3, and it does not end in 5 or 0 respectively. So we can begin by systematically testing the divisibility of 149 by larger prime numbers. Trying division by 7, 149 divided by 7 equals 21 with a remainder of 2, so 7 is not a factor. Trying 11, 149 divided by 11 equals 13 with a remainder of 6, so 11 is not a factor either. Trying 13, 149 divided by 13 equals 11 with a remainder of 6, so there is not a prime number smaller than 13 that is a factor of 149. Since 13 times 11 equals 143, 11 is less than 13, and factor pairs are balanced, as we saw in part 3, prime factorizations. If there were a prime factor, it would have been identified already. So 149 is prime. The trial division algorithm, a step-by-step -step procedure for finding factors of positive whole or natural numbers, says that if a natural number is composite, then at least one of its prime factors is less than or equal to the square root of that natural number. The algorithm provides a way of not only finding prime numbers, but also a simple and foolproof method of determining if any natural number is prime. For example, to determine if 1019 is prime, it is only necessary to check for prime divisors that are less than the square root of 1019, which is about 31.92. Applying the divisibility rules, 1019 is not divisible by 2, 3, 5, or 11, so the only primes to check are 7, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, and 31. Since 1019 is not divisible by any of the 11 prime numbers, 1019 is also prime. Though the divisibility rules as a method to be used alone will work for a tedious brute force approach to factoring numbers, time and effort can be saved with a couple of observations. 2 is the only even prime number. Numbers that end in 5 or 0 are divisible by 5, and generally only numbers that end in 1, 3, 7, or 9 can be prime. Let's use what we have seen so far to find the prime number right after 1019. Using the fact that any prime number must end in 1, 3, 7, or 9, we can try 1021. The square root of 1021 is nearly 32. 31.95. So by trial division, 1021 must be prime if it has no prime factors less than or equal to 31. Applying the divisibility rules, 1021 is not divisible by 2 or 3, since it is not even and the sum of its digits is 4. Since the number ends in 1, it is not divisible by 5. 1021 is not divisible by any of the remaining 8 prime numbers through 31, so it is prime. Factoring large natural numbers is very important in the field of cryptography. The study and use of codes and ciphers, currently widely used to design computer security and software encryption systems. One of the more popular encryption schemes in use today is RSA, which is based on the product of two very large prime numbers. If the prime factors are kept secret, it will be very difficult, though not impossible, for a code breaker or cracker to factor that product, known as a semi-prime number. 